Hello, this is Crypto CJ. It's a trade of the day, Friday afternoon Zoom edition, and the FUD is flying. I mean, I'm I'm rocking out my Elmer FUD background today because there's so much nonsense in the news. FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. So instead of going to the charts, I've got a article from Crypto Potato that's uh, detailing the mischief that's uh, causing this. Let's go check it out. You guys probably know most of this already, but there were a few things I didn't know. All right, so you should be seeing my crypto potato article. Yes, yes. You? Yeah. With a name like crypto potato, it has to be good, right? So <laughs> we're hanging around 20K. We dipped below earlier today. We bounced back up. So looks like we're kicking and clawing and scratching to hold that 20K. Here's some of the reasons why. We've got the Silver ba Silvergate Bank, which is a crypto-friendly bank that uh, looks like it's going under. I'm not going to read all these. I'll put the link in the chat if I remember. Silicon Valley Bank, which isn't crypto-related, but you know, could be involved in tanking the whole, not the whole financial system, but you know, putting a dent in it. And Joe Biden wants more of your money. Big surprise there, Uncle Joe. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Yeah, and he also wants unrealized capital gains to be taxed. Right, so, right. He wants he wants profits, actual profits taxed, and profits that you're thinking about taking also taxed. So that's ridiculous. That's the most yeah. ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. No, How no argument. Here. But anyway, I don't want to talk about that anymore. Uh, <laughs> speaking ridiculous. Hey. You know, usually government employees aren't seeking more work, but this Gary Gensler guy for the SEC just wants to run everything. So maybe his, his people don't have enough to do. But he's causing more mischief with the SEC. Um, the Fed, you know, the inflation has not really come down that much. The financial number, the overall economic numbers have been poor this week, and we're probably getting a 50, per, or 50 point bump later this month. That's not going to be good, but I think it's priced in. And then this I didn't know. Um, I mean, I knew I knew about it generally, but I didn't know it was it was coming down. I guess the, the the government has some Bitcoin they've confiscated from alleged criminals, perhaps convicted criminals. But uh, it was like they're they're dumping it on Coinbase, and maybe that's dragging the price down. A bunch of selling pressure going on there. And that's about it. Sending you into the weekend with a smile on your face. Uh, on the plus side, well, actually, any comments about these these matters before um, we head over to the charts? And please, don't be too political. Okay, I guess that discouraged further comments. So uh, let's go to Bitcoin, look at the chart. About a 15% drop this week. It's trending up a little bit. We were below 20K. Uh, earlier this afternoon so it has nudged up i think we'll potentially close above it for the day we've got a little less than an hour before the uh, the day candle closes so yeah bounced hard off this 24 or 5 area never did close above 25 and uh working its way back kind of curious to see if it'll test the bottom of this range down here around 15 8 got some low buy orders in here we'll see if they get hit um, on Ethereum, we lost 1500. That was disappointing. It dipped all the way down to 1370 uh, ish today before bouncing back above 1400. We'll see if that holds. That puts it right in the middle of this range. All right. Well, that's my take on the market overall. Any questions, comments before we try to see if we can find some trades? All right. Well, I guess that article by Crypto Potato is pretty comprehensive, and I will put that in the chat if you guys want to look at it. Just um, one comment about um, the market, just okay. on, on a different tag, um, like Bitcoin's going down, but gold is going up. Just out of interest. Yeah, I was. I think we've all been hoping that Bitcoin would become digital gold, and it was called called that for a while a year or two ago. 
but it, it hasn't quite worked out that way. It's running all it's it's seen as an at risk asset, the same as the stock market. That's been really disappointing. All of us want to see a, a break of between the two, between uh, Bitcoin and, and and the stock market. So the Bitcoin's more like gold, but that hasn't panned out yet. So the ultimate hedge against inflation at this point does. Well, I couldn't, shouldn't say it's ultimate, but but gold seems to be the better option at the at the moment. Um, but obviously, it doesn't have the a chance to increase to the point that um, the Bitcoin does. All right, let's go to Bitcoin or altcoin alert. I almost called it Bitcoin alert, and see what we can find. Okay, I'm on the altcoin radar, and I'm sorting by AA score. I did that a little while ago. I need to refresh. Can I ask you a general question about altcoin alert? Right? Sure. Um, is the what's the guy's name? Is it Josh that's from the tie? Yeah. Josh, is he still get on the calls and talk? And um... yeah, he was on Tuesday's call. Okay, I always enjoyed his. Um... His insights, and of course, he built this thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then for like six months, he like disappeared, and I think that's when I dropped off because I thought, eh, I'm not, I'm not using this, apparently not the right way, and it wasn't paying for me, and I was missing Josh, so um, I was curious. Well, John, you're not helping my uh, altcoin alert Zoom at the moment, but uh... oh. <laughs> that's okay. No, I say what you. I... That's okay. Well, we, we... Hey, you gotta, no, it's, gotta be it's, honest. It was my hundred bucks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, I like Josh on there. Um, and he deals more with the data side and meeting with some of the movers and shakers in crypto. So it's nice to hear what what he's talking about. Most of his clients are actually practically all of his clients of are that institutions. Part of my trading uh, profile instead of just yeah. buying crap and holding it. Yeah. 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 Um, so trying to stretch a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. but but you know it got to be where i couldn't i personally couldn't afford it although i think it's a good thing okay how's that <laughs> that's helpful <laughs> i appreciate that okay i do feel strongly that this is more of a day trading or short-term swing trading software and it's sort of an odd fit with crypt nation because you know they they're more into long-term swings and um you know buy and hold so in researching projects and you know finding uh jewels in the rough what do you call that um diamonds in the rough diamonds in the rough that's right and uh i don't care about any of that i just want to trade based on the charts and in some news so that's that's how i use it and so if you're interested in in day trading and short-term swing trading uh, i think all the coin alert can help can help you find uh um coins to do that and we're going to go through a few different sorts uh, the first one I have is by AA score. A quick review. Um, I'm going from the highest to the lowest. And what uh, Allcoin Alert or AA is telling us is that this coin hero, HXRO, has an 88.7 chance to go up 3% or more in the next 48 to 72 hours. But this is, uh, I'm not going to look at this one because there's practically no information on it. Um, I do have new mare up. And this one, I, I usually prefer 80 or better, but this is close enough for our purposes. With uh, the crypto dump we just discussed, you know, finding anything close to 80 is, is going to be good. So even though the other uh, data feeds are showing bearish, this one's been beaten down. We'll see if it has a chance to come back. I've got the five minute chart here. Um, I left this up because I want to show you an example of a one, two, three dip. That's one of my favorite strategies to trade on the five minute chart. We're on the five minute chart and this happened in the wee hours of the morning. A really perfect example of, well, not a perfect one, but uh, a pretty good one. We have a, a dip here, first dip, two red candles, second dip, green, third dip. Probably would have gotten in here and would have gone against me a little bit and then come back up. 
it had gone to the SMA line, it would have had a two percent profit in uh, three hours. That's a really that's a good day trade. Had I been looking at this resistance up here, I would have gone for a little more, about three and a half percent, and I would have gotten out here um, at around three hours. So those are good examples of of a one two three dip and how to do that. But that was in the wee hours of the morning. We're in the afternoon, and currently Numair is sitting between the SMA line and top of the Bollinger Band, one of my least favorite entry points on the five-minute chart. So we're going to look at support and resistance and see if we can um, uh, maybe do a price alert to get a better entry. And before I forget, my last Zoom was on Monday. I did show you guys, I've got it on this chart here on a different chart, a different layout, the support and resistance levels with breaks. This is a Lux Algo indicator. And if you're struggling to identify support and resistance, um, you can you can have it pointed out for you. There's a few different a few different indicators that'll do this, but type in support. Uh, this is the one I like by Lux Algo. It's a free, uh, they are a paid service, but they provide a lot of free content. And this is one of those. So you can add that to your charts if you want. I don't have it, have it on this particular layout because I don't want to clutter up the chart too much. Um, we're going to look at some other indicators on the 15 minute chart in a moment. But anyway, CJ, we're seeing, okay, go ahead. CJ, um, that Lux Algo support and resistance, um, can you set alerts on that? Sort of. Uh, if you go it's to the so usual I'll... way to set an alert, it'll it'll get let you do do one on resistance broken or resistance or support broken. Right. Okay. Right. So, which isn't really, and that's fine. I I, I do trade that way a little bit in, in a certain strategy. But let's say I wanted to set an alert on this, I would probably just use a price alert that's aligning with. With the support with the support here, you know, just right click and add an alert where it is, and just go that route. But right, yeah, it's not it's not an easy as easy to set one in this as some of the indi other indicators um, that I've uh, talked about before. So I think I've seen um, buy sell signals on it. Is that that's correct? my I've I've added the super trend. So those are super. No, no, I'm I'm talking about that alert, that indicator. I'm, I think I've seen buy sells on it. I okay. I could be wrong. Seeing that there might be a different one that does that. I can't say my my search for this has been comprehensive. So yeah, if one of you guys finds one with um that's easier to set alerts on, I'd I'd be interested in that. But I've been a little selfish. I, I I can identify support and resistance pretty easily, so you know, I really haven't looked for an indicator on it. Um, where was I? Oh, Numair. Yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing some support right about here on the five-minute chart at 15.84. Again, around here at 15.55, and again down here. Around 1520. So those are three areas I consider putting putting price alerts. All right. So, but as you know, I prefer alerts on indicators on the 15 minute chart. So I'm going to go over here to Numair on the 15 minute and look for uh, potential potential places to put an alert. I'll start with the super trend. <clears throat> Um, I've got my super trend on the ATR five minutes. I've seen them range from 10 to 22. So, you know, play with that as you see fit. Um, and the cells on Numair have done pretty well. I don't know if this is something you can short on leverage or not, but um, the buys have been just okay. I think we're going to find with most of the coins that we look at, they've been beaten down quite a bit, that the buy signals, the, the bullish signals aren't going to be very good. You know, it's about almost about right at, right at 2% on that one. Not bad. 
Uh, divergence might be a better option here. Super trend, just like it sounds, is trend based. And then I usually match those up, those alerts up with uh, the stochastic RSI and the um, the uh, impulse MACD, see if they match up. And divergence, I'm going against the grain, trying to find dips and pumps. So matching it up against these two won't help us. Uh, I've got the divergence for many indicators, version four, which is the one you're seeing the, the red and green uh, cutouts. And then I use this, um, unfortunately that does repaint. So as it gets more data, it might change. And then I've got a non-repainting one as well. And that's what I really use for, for confirmation on divergence. Divergence is just a disagreement. Did I say that already? Between the uh, candle action and the indicator. Um, when you have bullish divergence, you know the candles are trending down, but the indicator is going up, and vice versa for the uh, for the bearish divergence. And these bullish divergences did pretty well. And this one went up three percent on the fifteen minute chart. This one went up to about two and a half percent, then dropped three, and then back up. So that's a pretty good trade. And again, if you can short those, which I'm not sure, those did really well. You know, bearish divergence kicked in here before that big drop. That's pretty sweet. Um, about 8% there. And then, um, you know, about 2% there. You still might be in that one. So I'm kind of digging divergence on this one. And the other one I like to use is the stochastic RSI. Set alerts on that. Um, oh, before I get out of this, I'll show you how to set an alert on this. Right click, add an alert on divergence, whichever one you're choosing, positive or negative. It's positive if you're spot trading once per bar close. And um, you know, AA score would be what I would call this one. And I think I forgot to show how you do an alert on the super trend. So one of the reasons I like this one is it's easy to set alerts. You can also set an alert in both directions, which is my favorite feature of it. So if you're on leverage trading both directions, you can do the super trend direction change. Make sure you put on once per bar and you're good to go. If you're going with spot trading only, go with the buy option and otherwise it's the same. So. All right, let's get rid of that. And then the RSI, I want to cr see a cross on the 20 value and then crossing back up. So the 20 value is considered oversold. I want to see a dip and then show signs of recovery before I, before I get in. And I'll show you those crosses with the vertical line. And here's a dip and a cross right about here, drops below the 20 value, then crosses above. That's probably where the alert goes off. And you see it's a pretty good entry. You get in here and then uh, you get a little pump up about almost 3%. Love that. I've got another one here, which doesn't do as well right away. So this one's a fake out. Looks like it's going to go. And then it crashes about 8%. On longs, I've been uh, ladder buying at around the 5 to 7% area um, if I'm on leverage. So I probably would have gotten another position in about here and been in this. Maybe even a, a second one down here. And I might have gotten out right about here because the two, I would have had a loss on my first position, but the first two would have been in profit. So it's kind of hard to show the numbers. That's how that works. If you buy, if you make two ladder buys, it's kind of risky. You know, if it keeps going down, you could be stuck in a trade or, you know, eventually get frustrated and get out and, and have a loss. So bear that in mind. I've got another cross here. And you can see it goes uh, up, down, up again. 
that would have probably been a better entry. Probably would have ladder bought here, and then you're back up past your original entry. So that would have been a good a good trade there. And uh, I'm not going to go through the rest of them, but you can see the other crosses. There's one here, here, here. So this one does go off with some frequency, probably a few times a day. And to do an alert, right-click on Stochastic RSI, add an alert. K-line is the blue line. We want to be crossing up. Value of 20. Once per bar closed, leave it on all day. So every time a candle closes and crosses that 20 value, you get an alert. AA score, and you're good to go. And if you want to short this, you just go the opposite. You go crossing down on 80, which is the overbought area. And the same thing. So. So it crosses here when the red line goes above the blue line and comes comes back down from the 80 value. Okay, I think I'm done with NMR, new mayor. Any questions on this one? Okay, we'll do a different sort. That was the uh, AA score sort. Uh, Chris from our group suggested the one hour projected range. I use this a lot. The market was uh, pumping hard in uh, late 21. It had some success with this. But this is going to show an upper and a lower range. And I was looking at one of these other ones earlier today. It's gone now because that was more than an hour ago. I usually like to see 3% or more on on this. But um, this is a pretty good, this is close to 3% in, in one hour, it's, pre it's predicting. Kava has been uh, pretty active lately, so let's check that one out. Okay, look at the five minute first. We are up, this one has trended up nicely today, most of the day. Kind of ignored that, that Bitcoin crash from earlier today and it's been pumping up. Not a good entry place at the moment on the five. Could draw a diagonal line here. And see if it drops below that. I'm not into those as much as some traders are, but let's see if I remember how to draw one even. Yeah, here we go, this one. Yeah. So if it, you can set an alert on this line if you want. You know, I hardly ever use this. I'm not going <laughs> to talk about this. I just let's notice that diagonal pattern. I I see like support here around 916. That's pretty close to where we are now. I might go to the next support, which is right about here. You know, 89 cents. That's probably where I'd be looking to get in or at least to reevaluate. And there's another one here, about 88 cents, and down here at about 85. So those are potential places to set price alerts to evaluate pullbacks. On our 15-minute chart, let's look at our indicators, super trend. Uh, the buys have done pretty well, at least the last two. You know, that had a nice move up, almost 4%. This one obviously did really well. A little dip here, then, yeah, big move, you know, 10%. So super trend looks good on the spot side. That sell did nicely, 4%. This one, you probably stopped out. I do you stop losses on shorts because you know, that, that's no fun. Okay, on divergence. I know Kava can be um, traded on leverage. And it did predict this dip here, even if you took it way back here on, um, on Wednesday night, you know, up 3% probably would have gotten out there. 
Oh wait, that's the wrong direction. Oops. So yeah, I would have gotten out 18 hours probably, 4%. That's good stuff. There's a nice move there on the short side, but this one, yeah, kind of hurting on this one. And the only one I'm, on the bullish side I'm seeing is this. Would have been nice to catch this one here, but it didn't. But it did catch this secondary move. So, yeah, nice move there. So, kind of like divergence on this one. And on, <clears throat> on RSI, on the long side, yeah, due to this, this move, all these would have done well eventually. So... I don't know if it's really useful to point that out. But you see the crosses here. Yeah, like this one. It's a 3% move before the dip. So that's pretty good. And obviously this one did really well. And the, any of the other crosses would have done would have caught this eventually. So yeah, good stuff there on the stochastic. Okay. So Kava seems to be in play. Any questions on, on this one? Okay, pretty good on time, about a half an hour. We'll do one more. Let's do the, the long-term sentiment, which is the other one I like to sort by. So we've used the AA score sort and the one-hour projected. The long-term sentiment, that's uh, the Twitter data. What are people talking about? We talked earlier about Josh from the Thai. He's the one who who oversees um, the, the, the Twitter data coming into AllCoin Alert and providing this information. We can combine that with the Elder Impulse Daily, which is a technical indicator, you know, like some of the other indicators I've shown you, the Impulse MACD and things like that. It's not using that particular one, but it, it's like that. So... And you can hover over these question marks to get a better <laughs> explanation of what these do. So when I see a match of the long-term sentiment and the elder impulse daily, that's something I want to investigate further. If I sort by long-term sentiment, it's going to show me very bullish and bullish. What are people talking about online? And unfortunately today, there are very few matches, if any. Yeah, I only see one. This uh the swap token, which I've never heard of. Yeah, let's check it out with the hay. It's on Poloniex, Gate, IO, Uniswap, MaxC. These are all kind of um, crypto.com. None of these are confidence inspiring places to buy crypto. Pancake swaps, okay. Um, then you have DeFi fees. I'm kind of curious on Gate.io. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> you see big spikes like this, that's usually indicative of a lack of volume. So, you know what? I'm not going to look at this. Um, let's look at something else. Okay. That's the only one that matched. So, Sometimes that happens. Then I'm going to go to my next, um, the next sort I like to do, which is 24 hour change. And to be honest, you can find this just about anywhere online for free. You know, uh, AA is a paid service, but if you're on it, you're paying for it and you can't quite get what you want through these other sorts, it's nice to have this one. So you can either catch a trend and do the sort by you know, what's pumping today, or you can sort against it, look for what's been crushed, and it should come back for a recovery. So since I emphasize dip trading on this, uh, this Zoom, let's see what's been crushed. Got IMX and Dash and Aon. Um, IMX and Dash, I, I trade with some frequency, so let's look at those. Five-minute chart. Slightly trending up since this morning. Top of the Bollinger Band at the moment. Pretty good support right about here, around 80 cents. 
and some more down here around um, 77. Potential price alert options on the 15 minute. Super trend is caught that move up, not bad. Caught that down. And this was a bit of a, yeah, I got caught 3% move there. So super trend did pretty well both directions on divergence. Um, not bad. She got out before this tanked. You know, 4%, that's a good move. Yeah, all these did well, you know, three to four percent. All the bullish ones did. Well, these two didn't, but but at least in this frame right here, all the bullish ones were profitable, as were the bearish ones. So and then this one just triggered uh, a little while ago. So divergence looking pretty good here. And then all right, stochastic RSI. Yeah, any of the ones before the dip would have required an additional purchase. So let's say you took you know, this one here, Wednesday night. Well, you probably would have gotten out here with 3%. But if you didn't, and if you got caught in this, you're probably toast. Um, if you're on 10x leverage, two ladder buys won't be enough. You probably need three, maybe even four. Uh, if you're on five X, it's easier to handle. So, hmm. yeah, the, the the crosses before the dump were good, and the cross after the drop. This one crosses here. We would have been eventually successful. This one here looks pretty good. Yeah, so, so the last two were, were good as well. So, all right. Um, yeah, IMX has been a, a wild ride lately. Any questions on this setup? Yep. I got a question about the divergence okay. indicator. Um, do, do you Are there like defaults of which indicators you're using, or is there like a big list of them that you've <laughs> picked four or five? Uh, the indicators within this indicator, because it's tracking about yeah, eight of do, them. If you do the settings, do you do, yeah. put your settings on the screen for a second? Sure. So okay, I think so this is what you a mean. Whole big checklist. Right. And, and I unchecked this one, Money Flow, because I wasn't familiar with it, but the other ones I knew. Okay. And if you click this, you know, it might show up, it may not. Yeah, it looks like it is CMF. Yeah, that confused me when I opened it up because there were so many of those things. Yeah, I thought MF. Yeah, I thought it was similar with the money flow, so that's why I, I don't have that one on. Okay. I usually took off okay, the then, uh, OBV for a while, and then I read something about it and I liked it, so I put it back on. Okay. And I also yeah, changed the colors. The they show up in the little box there, telling you which ones have triggered. Yeah. Right. It'll tell you which ones are, are in play. Yeah. So yeah, this okay. one's pretty cool. That, that clears it up, thank you. All right, welcome. All right. Any other questions about this setup or any other indicators? Very well, uh, I'll throw it open. Any questions about you know trading, day trading, short-term swing trading in general, or altcoin alert? Okay. Well, I'm, uh, one indicator that I'm really falling in love with is the momentum indicator. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a few of them, but but uh, you, know, you saw my charts where I have the stochastic RSI and the um, impulse MACD. Yeah, if you want the momentum indicator, add that one as well. You know, tinker with the settings and see how how it helps. Use it for divergence, or I mean confirmation, and then. Um, you know, or you can put a, I'm not, I've, I've used it for confirmation. I don't think I've traded off of it before, or at least not very long. So, but I'm glad you're having some success with that. Are you using that as your, 
your main my um, main three indicator? things are Bollinger bands, RSI, and momentum. Those are okay. the three I use. That's it. Yeah, actually, let's look at the other setup I was using. That's yeah, it right I there. call this one the five energy trends. Uh, a video I said I saw said you should have some level of these. That guy liked the Heikinashi candles, which which is, is a smoothing function and shows trends. Then you have support and resistance, then momentum, then stochastic RSI. Um, one, two, three, four. I think I, I think I took one off. I didn't like, but um, yeah, that's another layout I use from time to time. But I, I'm I use it mostly for the support and resistance, and I don't like the Heikinashi that much. So I like the regular candles. But yeah, this is what Oliver's talking about. This momentum indicator. It's probably when the RSI them. crosses twenty going up. Um, wait for that momentum to go up too. Mm -hmm. And then you got two confirmations, and then look at your Bollinger bands and see how much room you got. Yeah, that's the other one, the Bollinger bands. So those those five are they come together and and show you what you want to see. Then that's good stuff. Turn the super trend off, but it all depends on how much leverage and your take profit because you can get in and out really quick yeah all right good stuff well if there's nothing else i'll go ahead and end the uh aa call here if you're watching on the recording thanks for doing that hope to see you live on monday or friday check out the opportunities listed in the pinned comment they help support the channel if you're in carbon please stick around we'll be talking about that shortly thanks